Hey Slingers, day seven at Oshkosh. We've had an absolutely fantastic time. Today's the day everyone packs up and we see some of these incredibly impressive aircraft leave. This is the C5. The C5 can take huge loads from the front and the back and it's earned the nickname Linda Lovelace. And if you're squeamish, don't look that up. The uh, B29 behind me is headed out as well. So uh, really excited to be here with all this action going on. We're standing here at the flight line, right in front of the most beautiful constellation, nicknamed Connie. This airplane uh, first flew in 1943 and was the first uh, civilian airliner that, that had a pressurized cabin that saw uh, widespread use. So just so great to see an airplane like this here. It's an airplane that has not a single straight line in it. Any of you ever dreamed of flying a, a jetpack? Well, this guy has. Tell us what it's like to fly this jetpack. Who are you and what is this jetpack? Uh, my name is Richard Browning. I'm the founder and chief test pilot from Gravity, and we fly these jet suits. Uh, we're here at Oshkosh. It is a pretty amazing experience. I mean, it, it is the closest you can get to that dream you have of flying and moving with, like, three-dimensional freedom uh, in just open space. It is awesome, especially in front of such a great crowd. It looks amazing, and it also looks intuitive, kind of like the, the modern, like, hoverboards or one wheels. Is it an intuitive vehicle to operate? Entirely. Even my kids learn to do this. If you're somebody who can pick up snowboarding, skiing, surfing, even riding a bike fairly quickly without overthinking it, you can do it on our tether system, often within a probably five or six goes. Each go is only three or four minutes. It's very, very quick. That's great. So how far are we away from uh, being able to buy one of these ourselves and uh, step out our back door and go flying up into the sky? So we focus particularly on the medic and military world, but actually we, out of all the clients we've had, occasionally we do get asked to custom build a, a suit for a client and once they're trained, we do do that. So it is possible to do. And then race ideally in our overwater race series. A few years ago, one of our Sling Pilot Academy instructors uh, got a video of a guy in a jetpack somewhere between Catalina Island and Palos Verdes Peninsula. It was all over the news. We had the FBI visit us. We had a, a lot of different officials visit us. That wasn't you, was it? No, no, I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. No, in all seriousness, we've got a great relationship with the authorities. We never do such a thing, and I think they later found out it to be a balloon. Uh, but yeah, no, we, we like terrain hugging. Uh, it keeps it much safer as well. That's great. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. It looks amazing. Thank you so much. It looks like Rob Holland is getting ready to fly. Let's go see uh, what he's doing to prepare for his air show. Follow me. I'm standing here at the flight line with US Unlimited Aerobatic Champion 11 times in a row, Mr. Rob Holland. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. So Rob, no one has ever won the US Unlimited Aerobatic Championship 11 times in a row. What have you done differently or what is different about you that has that has gotten you to this level? I guess just lots of practice. I don't know. Uh, Leo Loudenslager, who's amazing and a hero, he won it um, seven times. He probably could have kept going if he wanted to. I don't know how to do anything else, so I just keep practicing and I keep getting lucky and I keep winning. So it, it's just been working out really well. That's great. So in, in terms of like excelling in like unlimited aerobatics or un excelling as a pilot, working on a private pilot rating or commercial rating, do you think there's a similarity uh, to excelling in any one of those categories? Oh, absolutely. It's just a matter of pushing yourself and not pushing yourself outside of your limits. I tell everybody there's the envelope of the airplane, which you can't go out of. There's your ability, which you shouldn't fly outside of. But there's also your comfort level, which is usually less than your ability. And if you fly between those two, you're always going to get better and push your ability. So you always want to fly just a little bit outside of your comfort zone to increase you know, your performance and how good you're going to get. Got it. So there's, there's no progress without envelope expansion. Uh, envelope expansion can be too, too much and be dangerous or too little can be just as dangerous. Exactly, it's like the old saying, you know, you have 100 hours, you have 100 at the same hour. You, know, you want every hour to be different, so you're constantly learning and, and building new skills. That's great advice. So rumor has it that you may have got a rating at Sling Pilot Academy, is that true? That is true, yeah. Um, I guess it was just over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I did my MEI, got my multi-engine instructor rating there, and it was a blast, I had so much fun. It was a good time. That's so great, so someone even flying at your level, there's always uh, another, another, uh, height that you can reach. Oh, there's always something else to learn. That's, that's the beauty of aviation in general. There's always more to learn. There's more ratings to get, more knowledge to obtain, more skills to accumulate. That's great. So now you're getting ready to do your air show today. 
You're going to pull, what, uh, 9, 10, 11 Gs. What do you do to prepare for an air show like the one you're going to do today? And how do you make sure that you're in good physical condition and mental condition? You know, I am safe. What do you do to achieve that on a day like today with the sun beating down, humidity, people everywhere, lots of chaos? How do you do that? I mean, there's a lot of steps to it. I always tell everybody that everything you do in the air is just to validate what you figured out on the ground. So the ground prep is really important. Thinking about my routine, what are the winds doing, where's the crowd, where's the crowd lines, what's the density altitude, what figures am I doing in my routine. It's a set routine, but you always want to run through it and coming up with a really good game plan before you execute in the air, which is good for any type of flying. But as far as being like physically prepared, I do it a lot. I'm in this airplane all the time, so you really get used to the Gs, the negative Gs over a while. But it's also important to be fit too. Uh, I'm not the most physically fit person in the world, but I do try to go to the gym you know, three or four days a week. Um, I walk as often as I can and try to try to stay in shape. What are some of the, the G's that you're going to pull on a show like today's? A typical air show is 10 or 11, minus 6 or 7 for, for air show flying. Competition flying is usually a little more. I'm usually pushing 12 and minus 9. The most I've ever done is 13.5 and that was, that was an accident. But the plane's rated to plus minus 16, so even though I'm working myself really hard, there's plenty of margin left in the airplane. Got it. And then uh, today it's, it's really hot, it's really humid. Besides hydration, is there anything that you have to do differently to, to have a successful flight today? Yeah, I mean, the air's a lot thinner, it's pretty soft, so I might have to back off a G here and there, really watch my energy state, make sure I'm meeting all the gates for my different figures. And um, yeah, just, you gotta be careful and have a safe show. Great, well, uh, Rob, we really appreciate you being such a great um, ambassador for professionalism and excellence, and we love that you're a Sling Pilot Academy ambassador. I hope you have a great flight. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Hey everybody, it's a real privilege for us to be standing here with uh, Captain Larson of the US Air Force F-22 uh, demo team, uh, call sign Raz. Tell us how you got that call sign. Typically a fighter pilot gets named on their first deployment or trip with a fighter squadron, so my first trip was to Kadena. So ZZ is on the tail of all the Kadena fighters, so my call sign stands for at Kadena, and then the R has uh, many, many meanings, and there's also a, a Taz out there in the F-22 community, so we're Raz and Taz. So we were just so impressed that we've been watching the F-22 demonstration every day and just talking about how aggressive it's been and, and how it's been just such an impressive close-in uh, show that you've been presenting to us. We didn't know it was you. We're so happy to meet you. Tell us what, what goes into putting on a show like that with an F-22. So for the show itself, very basic maneuvers, well within the flight control envelope of the jet, and safety is the biggest thing, so every maneuver is designed with safety in mind where I can lose an engine or have an issue and still recover the airplane and land safely on one engine. It's all built around safety, but we want to showcase some of the different things that the Raptor can do that no other combat-ready fighter in the world can perform because we have a very, uh, very well-designed flight control system thrust vectoring, and just very, very powerful engines. Is it possible to have a commander to do something that it refuses to do? Uh, you know, I haven't really found too many limits. Uh, one of the beautiful things about the Raptor is if you really want to do it, it seems that the jet will, uh, will let you do it. So uh, as long as you understand the flight control laws uh, and how the computer is working with you, because I'm just controlling the stick, the rudder pedals, and the throttles, and the jet's computer is figuring out what flight, flight control surfaces to move on the airplane to produce the effect that I'm requesting. So as long as you understand how that works, you can, uh, you can do what you want to do in that jet. So in your uh, Cobra maneuver, which was very impressive, how many Gs are you pulling during that maneuver? So relatively slow speed maneuver, we're in what we call pitch rate command, where the jet will actually command 20 Gs. But because we're slow, we're only going to get up to about 7 to 8 before we bleed off that energy. Uh, so the most G we pull in the demo is around 9.5. Uh, and then a lot of times for those Cobra maneuvers around seven to eight. Got it, so the nine and a half Gs you're probably pulling in one of your real tight turns? That's right, uh, so the higher speed, tighter turns, uh, we'll get up to, uh, to nine and a half, yes sir. We've uh, got a few friends who've uh, flown, you know, small single engine uh, airplanes like the F-16 or the F-35. Have you ever felt that the F-22 was underpowered? I have not, I've never had a uh, thrust issue. And we really get to see that when we're dogfighting against uh, dissimilar aircraft and just how much thrust the F-22 has really gives us an advantage in a vertical fight. Did you uh, start flying in, in the military or did you have any uh, prior experience uh, flying general aviation? I started general aviation uh, in my hometown in Iowa and I flew a, a Piper Cherokee but I didn't ever get a private pilot's license uh, by the time I got to Air Force pilot training. So I went through the Air Force pilot training program, got to start flying the F-22 
And while I've been flying F-22s, I've been able to do a lot of general aviation on the side, and that's been a thrill. Okay, so I'm here with, uh, holy sh**. We're being attacked from behind. So I'm here with Carson from Wearworthy, and uh, he does some backcountry flying and uh, aviation humor. What can you tell us about what you do? A lot of people know me for all my aviation humor content. I post daily ridiculous pilot videos. And then, uh, yeah, I love flying in Utah's backcountry. I, I live back in Utah, and it's such a gorgeous place. And so a little bit of exploring and a lot of just being silly. So if we want to do some backcountry flying, we should come see you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Me, me and JP have got a lot of uh, strips to go visit and hopefully not get blown up by P-51s in the background. <laughs> I live down in southern Utah, so it's like touching the Arizona border, Red Rock. A 20, like, it's like, in my opinion, it's like the mecca of where to fly in aviation because you're like a 20 minute flight to like six national parks. It's just so many cool places to explore and it really is incredible. So you you should not fly over, you should come and stay. And, and you're building a Zenith right now? Yeah, that's correct. So I'm building the, the Zenith CH750 Super Duty, uh, essentially trying to be one of those people that uh, proves that sometimes the nose wheels can do what the tail draggers do. And I love the slings, they're awesome. Family plane, soon, soon. Thanks for watching, it's been a fantastic Oshkosh. Day seven's come to an end. Still a lot of work for us to do packing up. Uh, if you haven't seen our other Oshkosh videos, check them out. This engine will be back here next year, and it'll be full of oil, and it'll be purring its way right into Oshkosh. We will have more content coming out over the next week. Please like and subscribe. See you next year.